I keep wanting to love Atlas Fallen. I mean, it's a delightful Prince of Persia inspired open world action RPG with big ideas, big monsters, and even bigger weapons to fight them with. So it's got that going for it. And I did enjoy myself as I explored each of its four unique zones, which stretch as far as the eye can see and deliver some mouthwatering if kinda washed out vistas. After spending about 18 hours with its mix of respectable monster slaying and brisk platforming, I can comfortably say it's a good time, especially if you bring a friend into its seamless drop-in, drop-out co-op. At the same time, its C-tier story is so campy and bone-dry in both writing and character performance that it's clear Atlas has fallen a notch or two. This campaign starts out rough. No, there are relatively few bugs. I mean, like, physically rough. I spent little time building a rugged yet scholarly desert dweller in the serviceable character creator before he was promptly blasted in the face with a whole bunch of sand, only to wake up to a life of indentured servitude as one of the unnamed. That's the bottom cast of Atlas Fallen sand-strewn medieval world, which, as we learn through some apocalyptic mumbo-jumbo narration, is ruled by an evil sun god. And it's also ravaged by giant sand monsters called wraiths. This is a pretty cool setup, but the execution of the plot that follows is thinner than the middle of an hourglass. For example, poorly synced lip movements and unenthusiastic voice acting sap the life out of cutscenes. What have you heard? Beggars hear all kinds of things. On top of that, there's no action in any of them, so they're pretty dull. And each of Atlas' major characters is a cardboard cutout without much personality to speak of. You've got the generic thief with the heart of gold. In case you're tired and want to rest, there's a village nearby. Here, take this as an apology. The upstanding night girl who secretly had a soft spot the whole time. You men, find a place for the refugees. Bring food and shelter. And Niall, the other sun god who spends his waking hours talking at you while looking like a knockoff of Jake Sully from Avatar. Chaos. No, I am the god of freedom change. He inhabits the magical gauntlet at the center of the story, but he's always there with you and rarely shuts up. I am a spirit, I guess. Sorry, my memory still is unsatisfying. But if you ignore all that and treat Atlas Fallen like an online co-op adventure where you and a friend run around a sprawling open world and unearth rare treasures, build up powerful characters, fight big monsters, or just chill out and collect cosmetics for the excellent transmogrification system to your heart's content, then it's easily the best thing since it takes two. That's especially true when you get into the rhythm of the open questing system. This game lets you complete side quests and interstitials between major story events separately while enjoying these same rewards, even when you're across the world from one another. It's fantastic to be able to freely split up and cover more ground like that. That said, it's a missed opportunity that couch co-op is nowhere to be found, and there's no crossplay to let you and your buddies on other platforms team up. It's clear that the main quest is paced around unlocking new mechanics rather than telling a good story. Atlas Fallen spreads its story across four open world maps, such as the underground fortress of Bastingar and the crater-filled wildlands, each of which carries a distinct vibe and is packed with enough hidden treasure and decently rewarding side quests to feel like there's always something new to find. Fetch quests make up the bulk of it, with Niall frequently asking you to find three shards to complete the latest relic and achieve the next major gauntlet upgrade. But I didn't feel like I needed to work overly hard to find each of the scattered components, and the rewards were always worthwhile. For instance, unlocking the triple air dash was a game changer that let me reach distant ledges. And Reveal lets you manipulate ancient artifacts that reveal hidden platforming challenges you didn't even know were there. Both of these new abilities unlock previously inaccessible areas, giving all four zones extra room to breathe and slowly unravel themselves to those willing to backtrack. But Atlas Fallen doesn't power gate its best loot behind that kind of repeated searching, meaning you can choose to only do the main story, skip all that extra spelunking, and comfortably beat the rather underwhelming final boss without the added trouble. 
That said, the one thing you can't skip is sand. Your weapons are made of sand, you move around quickly by surfing across sand dunes, and each of the various monsters is literally made of sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. That's a lot of sand in one land, let alone to conjure out of one hand. But there's still enough variety within this concept to not feel overly repetitive. Boss fights, quests, and random finds often give way to useful loot, armor, and essence stones that contribute to the deep customization and combat systems. Speaking of combat, Atlas Fallen's action-packed battles are simple but highly dynamic, thanks to a small number of moves that grow in power as you land hits. Fights center around two basic attacks that work differently based on the weapon you assign them to, but the twist is that your character's movement style changes depending on which weapon you strike with. For instance, the sword-like sand whip homes in on an enemy from a distance before pushing you backward, letting you whip around the enemy mid-air if you dodge around mid-combo like Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Alternatively, the punchy knuckle dust lunges you forward as you pulverize your opponents with both hands. There are three of these, but they all encourage very different styles. Atlas Fallen also includes a deeply satisfying parry button, offering a generous window to counter enemy attacks. And a perfectly timed parry can turn the tides of any battle by freezing opponents. There's also a two-handed slam attack that combines the styles of both equipped weapons, and you can top a chain of attacks off with an extremely powerful finishing move. That's plenty to keep anyone busy in a typical encounter against a group of two or three large enemies like the marauding tail garter and the giant crab-like shell basher. And it's a lot of fun to bring these bigger foes down piece by piece. It reminds me a lot of hunting Rathlos across a vast desert in Monster Hunter. I'm delighted at how Atlas keeps a nice balance between its moment-to-moment -moment slashing and smashing and its resource management systems. This is thanks to the momentum gauge, which fills up as you land direct hits and successful parries against enemies, gradually unlocking abilities you've slotted along the gauge. These collectible abilities make up the meat of Atlas Fallen's customization, and they can be crafted, upgraded, and mixed and matched to build any sort of character you'd want, including healers, damage dealers, crowd controllers, tanks, you name it. The catch is that it can be difficult to maintain high momentum since you receive more damage as your gauge reaches its limit. This risk and reward element keeps things interesting since the strongest abilities sit on the upper end of the gauge, and it's always tempting to unleash your highly gratifying finishing move to deal heavy damage at the cost of reducing your gauge to zero. It all comes together toward the end of the campaign, where every other fight has several enemy types filling the screen with lighting effects and clouds of yellowy dust. It's kind of like the heavier moments of Doom Eternal, but with sand instead of viscera. I've developed what I can best describe as a love-hate relationship with Atlas Fallen's visual style. I'd often be wowed at how gorgeous some of its zones look, some of it made me feel as if I were standing inside a piece of elegant concept art. I'm also pleased that Atlas Fallen produces consistently high frames in the PS5's performance mode, but I'm not as impressed that it struggles with fidelity, even in graphics mode, which is a shame because of how pretty and detailed its zones and armor designs are. Many of its animations are clunky, but what really bothers me is the compressed textures, low quality models, and graininess that look flat out ugly on my PS5 in both visual modes, as if I were playing a poorly made port of a Nintendo Switch game. Atlas looks much clearer on PC with none of the aforementioned compression issues, but its character models still evoke the uncanny valley more than most games. Atlas Fallen is a solid open-world action RPG with plenty of platforming and large monsters to fight. Putting aside its weak story and the console version's gritty graphics, there's a hidden gem of excellent combat, robust exploration, and surprisingly deep customization to uncover in the sinking sands of its arid wilderness. It's slightly disappointing that co-op is online only with no crossplay, but thanks to solid technical performance, it sticks in my mind as one of the better worlds I've explored with a friend lately. For more co-op action, check out our reviews of Exo Primal and Remnant 2. And for everything else, stick with IGN.